Hello, thank you for making a space to gather with us today. Being an online community was quite exciting at first, a new adventure, uncertain what would happen. I'm not sure we feel any differently now, having done church this way for the last 18 months. But now things are finding their way back into church and groups planning and starting up again. The question arises about how we blend these things and not lose what we have gained. But this is nothing new. Being church was never meant to be something that was settled. Being church throughout history has always been unsettling. And of course, we haven't always done that and we've probably had one of the longest settled periods of being church for the last hundred years almost. But what does it mean now, talking of blended models, online communities, face-to-face -face worship? I don't know. But that's what we are continually exploring together. And we find James, in many ways, is in the same boat with his community, moving from one model to another, one tradition to another, Jewish context to Gentile. So that is where we find ourselves over the next few weeks, gathering some of the ideas and thoughts we've explored here and other places and ask what the church might look like if we let some of these ideas take root. Light that shines on our questions and space for the exploring. Holy One among us, may we never take you for granted nor our calling to be your church. May we dare the Spirit to love us, challenge us, call us from where we are into the adventure called faith. May we call her to disturb our easy illusions our familiar traditions, 
our well-worn words and breathe new life into them. Yet anchor that which gives us meaning, that which holds us steady, that which is a strength to us over generations, that we might take those things as we find ourselves on new ground. May we make this space a pausing space, a breathing space for your love, that it may hold us and affirm us and forgive us. A love that names us, knows us and finds a home in us. A love called God, ancient yet ever new. And in that gift, we find the life we need as a community to praise you, as a body to honour you, as a family to welcome you and each other. Holy God, light that shines on our questions and the space to explore them honestly, we gather in your name and make space for the world, her heart and her longing, here among us. Hear us as we say the global prayer together. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I confessed last week I didn't find the epistles, all the letters that were the communication tool of the early church, easy to read. And truly, I don't. But boy, they can be hard-hitting. They are one-sided, and a letter in response to a situation or a question of which we don't know and can only surmise the situation. So it can be difficult to get the inflection, the nuance, because you don't know what James is specifically responding to. But they are quite pointed and direct. James exposes us to some direct and pertinent truths for all of us in the church, not just his own, who were trying to establish themselves and work out what it meant to be church then, but our vision of church too, asking the same questions, working out what it means to be church. Now, I will read the passage today and then invite you to read it again, offering a wee video to help focus on what might be the significant points for ourselves. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favouritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, Oh, have a seat here, please. While to the one who is poor you say, stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonoured the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfil the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for it all. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, 
if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food and one of you says to them, oh, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Is there much point on expanding what James says? He makes his points fairly robustly and clearly. So seriously, maybe just read it again. And if we fulfil those last few verses, perhaps that would be enough for one week or even maybe a lifetime. But taking the broader point of James, the way he is engaging with the local church and exploring how to be church, what priorities to have, what values to shape the new church around, and what work the church should be doing, there is more to say that might draw us into our present situation. What will be offered over the next few weeks is an invitation to reimagine the church, as we've been doing constantly. This will be limited, for it is culture and tradition bound, because it's difficult to reimagine things beyond our own experiences. That's why the church needs more poets and artists. We used to call them prophets. But have them in our leadership who can challenge us with images and words that are beyond where we have been before. But it is also true, all new ideas are actually old ideas. We shift them a wee bit, place them into a new context, find a different word to define them. But they're essentially the same ideas, just reimagined. Nothing the church is or says is new. It can only be reimagined. So we're going to step into the future, worry less about it, taking ideas that have come from discussion and questions over the last wee while, but have come into particular focus during these challenging pandemic months. And do as James has done, a firm faith around that which is essential to the gospel and invite the church to grow round these in the next generation as our context changes. These aren't blueprints. These aren't what we are definitely going to do. Far from it. These are 
pictures, to, to thoroughly explore, to, to challenge, to turn upside down. And if you are like me, we'll find 10 reasons why they won't work before daring ourselves to ask, well, I wonder what it might look like. That's always my first reaction. Why shouldn't we do it? But let that pass. Because these are all old ideas or questions the church has always been asking. And each generation has offered a different model in response to them as the context changes. But before we get there, let's sing a traditional tune with contemporary words that speak into this context today. So let's begin to wonder what the church might yet look like. Our calling is, in being loved by God, we love our neighbour. And the way we do that is build a church. That's essentially who we are and what we do. But what does that church look like and what might it yet look like? We start where we were last week in James, a listening church. Quick to listen, slow to speak. How might we have ears to hear our parish and our world? How might we shape a, a listening place for folk to come to and in love and grace and without judgment, just to unburden themselves, dream, tell their stories, confess? BBC Radio 4 has this amazingly, unexpectedly popular programme called The Listening Project, where we listen in to a couple of people, some who have met before and some who haven't, and discuss whatever it is that's important to them. It's almost a cult programme, and it's only about listening. Imagine us being there just to listen, to be there with others. I can imagine the church as an always open drop-in where there is always someone to sit with another and listen, never to judge, just to support, tell stories, share hurts. How much spiritual and mental good that could be for us all. We so often think we know what is important, but when we begin to listen to others, we realise we live in our own silos and worldview and miss most of what is reality for other folks' lives. And when we begin to listen, listening can grow. Now, we have partly done our own listening project in some, with some consultation we did a few years ago in order to evolve ourselves. What we heard then was the need for a better welcome. Focus on enabling families to gather and be families together. The need to build stronger relationships with our neighbours, those isolated, connecting people again, to inspire creative ways to engage people 
with community, shared passions, discussion, to seek and support the welfare of others and to learn to communicate, to tell our story and be a space to share others' stories. Listening. How might all that look if we build a church round listening to people and especially these six things that we heard? Welcome, families, relationships, creativity, welfare and communication. Now, not one of these is new and all of them are gospel imperatives. Each one is a core activity in the gospel. A gospel that is not just about believing in something, but doing something because of those beliefs, which is where we find James and his reimagining of the early church. A gospel that is not just about believing in something, but doing something because of those beliefs. So next week and for a few weeks following, we'll expand all of that and paint a picture of what that might look like. A church built on welcome, around families, in relationship, creative, seeking the welfare of others and communicating the gospel with or without words. Thank you for allowing us to join you again today. We are online as always. You'll find us at nkchurch.org.uk where the diary is, where all the connections to our Zoom rooms will be found, where the bulletin can be downloaded with all our news of projects and what's happening locally as organisations begin to start again. It'd take a wee while for all that to be put in place, of course, but over the next few weeks and months, we'll grow into who we're going to be over the next wee while. And do join us again next week, please, as we continue this exploration of what it might look like to be church in the next generation. Loving God, in the noise of this world of Afghanistani turmoil and Tigray conflict, of Syrian refugees and Yemen's hungry, we pray. In the divisions between us in our own communities, with the noise of prejudice and the silence of the forgotten, of the voices of the headline grabbers and the excuses we all use, we pray. In the noise of our fears and our struggles with the future, 
the arguments of leaders and the worry of the church. We pray. May that noise and that silence be our prayer. For in there may you hear the cries of the least and the lonely, the afraid and the fearful, the abused and the hurting. And may our ears be open to beyond our familiar world and hear what the world is crying, what the environment is saying, what our communities are speaking, that our prayers shift from words to being, from noise to ways of living, from lists to loving the world back. Loving God in all the injustices of the world, the imbalance of life, of hope, of opportunity, of wealth, of resources. May we be found listening, praying, and being your people. As we pray for those closest to us, those ill and those worrying, those grieving and those hurting, those overwhelmed and those sad, hear us. So be it. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the common life of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen.